Hi, everyone. Welcome to the People, Processes, and Tools webinar for communicating with sensitivity. There may be some others that are going to hop in, so we'll let that happen. As they are hopping in, I'm going to go ahead and let Darren explain why we put this together, who's involved, and how this came together. So Jaren, you wanna go ahead and take it from here? Sure, hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Jaren, I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Groundswell Startups. We're a high-tech incubator and co-working space right here in Melbourne, and our sole purpose is to make sure that our startup companies have access to the mentorship and resources that they need to be successful. And so the current situation doesn't change our mission and goals. We still wanna make sure that we're bringing great resources to our company. So Michelle Burke is an example of a Groundswell member and mentor who reached out and was able to jump on and put this call with us. Um, so we're really excited to have you. Thank you for your work. And I'm just gonna let you kind of jump in. Excellent, thank you, Jaren. So the, I, I wanna explain a little bit about Bossibly. Bossibly is really focused on helping young professionals step into whether or not they want, the, seeing the possibilities of being a boss. And then on the flip side, helping business owners keep their top talent. And I, I am part of the Groundswell community, have been for uh, I think over a year now. I really enjoyed the camaraderie that it provides. and. You know, as, as Jaren mentioned, we put this together because we, there's so many of us struggling with this right now, and there's so much going on in the way of communication, trying to work from home, uh, just such the, the shifting and the flexibility that we're having to do as a result of what's happening is really important. And, you know, a lot of these things that I've learned, I've learned through the School of Hard Knocks, or trial by fire. <laughs> so, you know, and I think depending on the size of the group, we, we may be able to unmute everybody and just have some natural dialogue if you're comfortable. If you're comfortable not uh, share, if, you're, if you be more comfortable with using a chat, that's, the, that's totally fine too. So let's talk a little bit about what that housekeeping looks like. This, you, everybody is on mute, whoever, hops in is on mute just to prevent like if the dog's barking or there's chaos going on then that way it's not disruptive this is being recorded so that way we can share it out if there's other people that want to use it if you wind up getting dis distracted or you have to replay it you want to go back to certain points of it we will turn that around usually within 24 hours uh, the Shay is going to help me moderate this and she'll, she'll be helping me look at the chat and make sure that we're pulling that out. Uh, or, you know, if, if, if it's okay for us to unmute, we can certainly do that. We've got a small enough group so we can, you can certainly do that. Feel free to unmute your mics if you need help with that. Just ask us how to, to do that. You should be seeing the little phone icon uh, somewhere on your desktop and you can be able to mute and unmute there. Um, or by your picture, you can do it there as well. So please hop in. We want this to be interactive. We want you to participate. We want to learn from one another. Ask your questions, share your comments. You're gonna, I'm gonna ask you questions and then I'm going to have a, a very long pregnant pause because I want you to participate. So that's one way that I will actually help facilitate that. And then you can send information in the uh, the chat, you can send it to everyone, you can send it to just certain people. So feel free to use that as your mechanism to communicate if you feel better or more comfortable that way. So the first question that I have for all of you are, is why are you here? And if you wanna unmute, you certainly can. If you prefer to put that in the chat, you can do that too. So go ahead and either type that or unmute and, and tell, tell us why you're here today.
Okay, I'll be brave. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we can, Annie. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, well, this is, I'm Megan. I'm uh, with Career Source Brevard. And, um, you know, this is kind of new territory for us. So, you know, we want to, um, you know, we're serving our business and our job seeker customers. And I just think uh, any ideas uh, that we can get um, from our community um, or anything I can share, this is maybe a good opportunity. That's why I'm here. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Megan. And uh, Kathy, she, she is here. Hi, Kathy. It's good to see you. She's saying, I'm here to get hey. some help navigating my business during this time and discover ways I can pivot. That's fantastic. So there, we're going to talk about some of those different techniques based on what's happening today. And Shane is saying, I, I lead a team of 16 and we are all now remote and I want to help serve them to my best ability. And Shane, a question for you there. Did have, have any of you worked remote historically or have you all been side by side? No, I, I have um I have two folks that are actually remote and then myself. Uh, so the rest of my team is in Virginia outside of DC. And most of them uh, show up into the office, although we have flexible schedules, so they're allowed to come and you know uh, take take a couple of days at home if they if they wish each each week, uh, just to reduce the the commute and you know which is is pretty gnarly there. Um, but yeah, so I'm <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> the I'm, I'm the the servant leader, but yes, I'm I'm the the one that's remote, but so I end up traveling there a lot. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Chris, is, Chris is saying, I'm here to learn about new ways to manage and support my sales staff. Excellent. Anybody, any, any, anyone else, would you like to share why you're here? All right. We will move right along then. So uh, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk a little bit about compassion and how to help others, how to understand how what's happening today is impacting how we do our work. So there's, there's panic and fear, anxiety, and that's showing up in a lot of different ways for people. It's not a one size fits all. So we're going to talk a little bit about what that looks like. And then we'll also talk about you know, a, a few items of engagement, a few keys of engagement that are quick tips that you can use with your team uh, remotely in light of what's taking place right now and how to determine what engagement looks like. We're going to talk about that too. And then we're also going to talk about the best ways to communicate, especially in light of being remote. So what does that look like? How can we show up for our team or our clients? It's not just our staff, it's also our clients. We're going to, and I'll use some examples, some real world examples of what is happening in my world. And then you know, if you all have some examples that you want to bring to the table, we can certainly explore that as well. But you know, it, it, it's certainly shifting us into another way of working and then us learning to be flexible as a result of this new way of working. So those are some of the things that we're going to cover today. So with that, we'll just jump into compassion. All right, here's a question for all of you. And you can unmute yourself if you like, or you can put it in the chat. So what causes people to fear the uncertain or the unknown? Is it A, they fear getting too involved? B, they fear not having a rigid schedule? C, they fear not knowing what will happen to them? Or D, they fear they will not enjoy it? What do you think is the right answer there? He's in there. Yeah. Kathy says C. 
I think everybody's going with C pretty much. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that, that's the right answer. You guys get a gold star. Awesome. It is. It is. It's really, it's the fear. They fear not knowing what will happen to them. And, and there's so much uncertainty and, and maybe doubt creeps in. So that, that definitely is the right answer. So good job there. Here's an interesting quote. So technology is unlocking the innate compassion we have for our fellow human beings. Bill Gates said that. My question to all of you is, what do you think this, what do you think this means? What does it mean to you? You can type it in a chat or you can actually unmute yourself if you like. We can, we can see beyond our own small world. That's nice. I like that. Thanks, Amy. What does an innate compassion mean? That's another, that's another tip there. Vulnerability, seeing people at home, not as dressed up, sharing the common story. Oh, that's nice, Jaren. Yeah, I think that's true because there's it's um, it we're now we're we're reaching into people's homes, <laughs> and then you know there's the dogs, there's the kids, there's the chaos. We're not as put together. Uh, Megan, it is an opportunity to connect while we physically distance ourselves. Nice. Uh, Shane is saying communication is at the heart of technology. What brings us closer helps us connect and relate. Yeah, that's that's huge. Any other thoughts on this? This is all excellent feedback, everybody. All right, so I want to use a business example now. So I talked about uh, that I will be pulling stories into this and and examples. So I recent when this. So I had delivered some uh, a workshop with a local client. Gosh, I want to say it was the it was maybe Mar I think it was in March. It was before we all had to scatter and lock lock ourselves into our houses. We were still allowed out, and it was a, a larger larger group. We had a, a wonderful workshop, and I had sent the, they had signed the proposal in February. Interestingly enough, the the check went to Groundswell, and Shay told me, "Hey, you got you got some mail here," and I I didn't get there. I think Shay, what was it? Probably I don't know, two or three weeks maybe went by yeah. before yeah. I actually showed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I then, she uh, opened it for me. She's like, you've got a check here. Awesome. Oh, now I think I'm a little bit more motivated to go get that piece of mail. So I then went over to Groundswell, picked it up, and I realized it was from uh, a client, this client that I'd done the workshop with. Now, the, the challenge with this particular client is they are not making payroll right now. So they have all of their events. So all of their events are face-to-face. Uh, -face. They have had to cancel all of those events. And they've started cutting staff. So now, now they're, not, they're not full staff. They're still, they're still making payroll it, for the limited staff that they have. And the owner is taking half of their salary. So this is a this this is one example of what's showing up for us and and what's happening. This is just one. I have I have a few more that I'm going to give you. 
But I was, you know, I was in a position where I needed to decide, okay, well, I have a check now and I, you know, I'm trying to figure out, and I'm not suggesting that this is, this is your approach or what you should do in this, in this particular example, but I, I personally elected to, I contacted the business owner and I said, listen, I said, I, I'm not going to cash this. I, I really want you to use that money to try to pay your people as long as you can. And that's how I was showing up in that particular situation. You know, she's already fretful. She's already upset because she has to let people go. And I felt like that was what I could do in the moment, at least to give her a little bit more breathing room, a little bit more wiggle room. So that's just one example of what's happening and what our, our businesses are going through, what our people are going through. But I'm going to give you I'm going to give you some more examples here, too. So and this is this is I, I'm using these examples because these are all real people <laughs> going through the, these these challenges with what we've got going on today and how we can actually handle them. So the first one is. Um, a, a former coworker of mine, uh, she is used to going into an office. She's used to, she's used to having that social interaction. I think there are probably folks that are more introverted that love this and say, this is amazing. This is perfect for me. So she's not, she's not in that camp. And that lack of interaction is creating social anxiety, social anxiety for her. She's able to get her work done. She, in some cases, she's working harder and longer because she's not sure where her boundaries are. She doesn't know when to start and stop. And she's not, it's not like she can just leave the office and put it away. It's, it's right in her living room. So that, that's one example that's happening. And she's a professional. She has staff. You know, she's trying to help her staff through this. And she's also trying to manage it. Uh, I, I'm guessing that most of us uh, uh, <laughs> that are on this call have been privy to having issues with finding toilet paper. So there's, that's creating panic. People are, there's an element of hoarding that's taking place or and then, and then just the simple act of having to try to figure out when it's going to be delivered to Costco or BJ's so that you can get a, a, a six pack or a bigger roll, uh, that's happening right now. So there are people panicking, which is causing you know, our, our, the issues that we're experiencing as well. The third item, so general, the general anxiety is, is taking place. This is a, a colleague of mine that has she is she's she works from home now she had traditionally worked from home and she had uh, she has four kids she has all of her kids now are are home working from home and the this was before the the, the school had sent out information on how to actually handle their lessons She's trying to create a lesson plan and she, she originally she said you know what i'm just gonna see if this this settles down and they're gonna go back that didn't happen so now now not only is she the mom she's she's a mom she is a full-time resource for an organization she's also the cook uh, she's now the teacher, and then to add another layer, the soccer coach sent all the stuff for one of her kids, saying, "Oh, and by the way, can you please add this of your add this to the list of things to do for your kids?" So that's another example of what's happening, and she's anxious. She's moving through it. She's actually planning and working towards uh, adjusting her new normal to create uh, a some type of schedule for herself, her husband, and her kids. And then, then you have the, the phobias. So now this, and it's, this, this is real. We've got a, 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 a gal by the name of um, Marianne. So her sister hightailed it to New Jersey and she thought she was going to be out of harm's way and now she's right in the thick and, and i new jersey new york border she's she's right in the thick of what's happening up there 
And so, you know, that's also a very real example of what's happening for, for all of us in the current state. So what does this mean? Self, so creating some compassionate leadership. I want to have some dialogue uh, in, this, in this space. Who, are, there, are there folks on this call that feel that they are showing up as a compassionate leader today? Shane, I, I'd love to put you on the spot here. I know, what, what, do you feel that, that you're, you're equipped to act with compassion right now or are you struggling in that regard? Do you mind me putting you on the spot? I hope so. <laughs> I think it's, you know, I mean, you can, you can only guess. Um, I try to have one-on-ones, you know, with my team, make sure that they're, you know, that they're holding up through this. You know, uh, several of them have uh, small children. They have mm. spouses who are also working. They're, they're essentially juggling time with the children and conference. Right. And so when they both have a conference call at the same time, <laughs> I, you know, I have to tell them, hey, I, I don't, you know, nobody cares if your baby's bouncing on your on your knee during this call. It's not going to be nice. This don't worry about it. Um, but just generally, you know, we have a few, a few folks who are actually, um, they uh, they live alone, and they're <laughs> that, that I think they're the ones who worry me the most. They're literally alone through this whole process. Uh, oh. They've been, you know, cooped up in their house uh, by themselves, no family around. Those are the ones that, that you know, I, I try and reach out to. So I, I hope that I'm being compassionate. I hope that I'm, you know, extending that, uh, that hand, but uh, you, you really just can't tell. Nice. You know? So if you don't mind, I'd love to walk through this with, with you in light of, you know, this having this dialogue. So, you know, the first item is, you know, these are the components of compassionate leadership. And so the first one is, is understanding your own needs. So are you, are you taking care of yourself in a way that you're, you, you are, it's using the analogy of, you know, you're on the airplane and you put your own face masks on, right? The, that, uh, the, the airplane mask. Are you doing that for yourself today? Well, I think um, for the better part of the last 15 years, um, aside from a couple of stints here and there, I've worked remotely. Uh, so I've, I've kind of built up a routine, and this is, you know, second nature to me. But I, I remember how difficult it was initially, you know, how you yeah. have to adapt. Um, but I also know that, you know, the, the very nature of, of the work that, that my team does is very social and, and collaborative. So not having those people side by side, co-located, can definitely, uh, you know, cause issue. Now, technology is helping us. Um, however, I think there's, there's, there's definitely a, a gap there that some of them are missing that face-to-face -face collaboration. And that's actually a really good point. So I think that moves into that next item, right? So you know, you know what, you have your own box of self-compassion and your own needs, which is amazing. So that's good. The question is then now you're, and you are also taking the time to notice what's going on with them. And you, you just said, I know that there are a few individuals on my team that are, are solo. So in the case of, of my friend, who is, she's by herself as well. She's itching to get back to work because she's isolated and she's alone and she's, it's driving her nuts. And she's finding ways, which we're going to talk about, to, to mitigate that. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that you're, you are observing the self-compassion and the understanding because you're paying attention to those needs of, of everyone in your team, especially those that are, are alone and have never done this and it's new to them. So as far as the empathy is concerned, I hear that I can hear that in your voice, putting, putting yourself in their shoes and uh, allowing for the, it, how often do you do your one-on-ones by the way, just out of curiosity? Never as often as I as I should, but I, I definitely have at least at least a few each week. Uh, but with a team of sixteen, and that means I'm you know I'm circ circulating through them you know probably once a month. Um, now that doesn't mean we don't have team meetings and, and such, but as far as just one-on-one -on -one interactions, it's it's yeah okay. it's not as often as as we'd like to. But I mean we're all stuck in meetings 
pretty much all of day. So <laughs> it, it's really difficult yeah. to, to schedule that time. That makes sense. So I think that the, this, the empathy is walking a mile in someone else's shoes uh, so that you understand you know, what's taking place. Sounds like you're doing that as well. And then the last item is you know, having the courage to, to offer advice if they ask for it. We're gonna cover that a little bit later. Um, but you, it, it, it does sound like you're showing up and, and either listening or asking them if they need some help. Absolutely. I, you know, th there's, there's some work that can be done asynchronously. They don't have to do it during the nine to five hours. Uh, so I encourage that, you know, hey, if, you're, if your baby's going to be napping later in the day, then do your work then. You know, don't, don't right. feel that you have to be there as long as you don't, you know, have meetings or somebody that's, that's counting on you. Uh, but even then, uh, reach out, you know, w work something out with that person and find another solution. Excellent. Yes. Thank you for playing along with that. I appreciate oh, it. <laughs> so now we're going to transition to engagement. And why do we care about this? So we, we really need to get things done at work. So it, it's not that the work stops. Well, in some cases, some businesses that has stopped or slowed. However, there are other businesses that are continuing to a, a business as usual, or they have more work than what they expected. So the engagement creates, uh, the, hopefully if we're doing it right, we're motivating our team to execute the work that, that they want to do. We're gaining commitment that they will complete it and we're collaborating as a team to actually finish it. Another poll question for all of you. So what is the biggest cause of problems with remote teams? So A, lack of supplies, B, bad attitudes, C, lazy workers, or D, poor communication. Okay, we're seeing a lot of Ds out there. D, yep. Yep, D it is, D it is. And, it, and what's interesting, so it, what, it can be trickier for us to make sure, and I think, uh, um, some of the dialogue we're having have heard heard early on as far as why individuals are here. You know, this is new. The technology is new. We're not accustomed to working and communicating in this way. So that is exactly it. So I think if if you walk away with one thing, it's from this particular webinar. It's it's how can you do a better job with that so that you can create engagement and connectedness so, and, and, and have people have a sense of, of calm with their work. You, you can't control this pandemic or anything else that's happening with it, but we can control how we behave, how we communicate, how we show up, and how we help other people. So that's good job. You guys all get gold stars. Next item I want to uh, share with you, this is a quote from Walt Disney, and it's says, so of all of our inventions for mass communication, pictures still speak the most universally, uh, so pictures still speak the most universally understood language. So my question to, to all of you is why, why are images or visuals so important? Why do you think that that's uh, a, such a big part of communication for us? What are your thoughts? And it can also be, doesn't necessarily have to be pictures, it can also be uh, someone's face. Uh, that is one of the ways we learn. Pictures tell stories and context, inference and connotation. It gives a face and pers personalization behind a message. It taps into deeper psychological needs. Nice. More commonly understood a more commonly understand interpretation of the message, less chance for confusion or tone, 
to influence how a message is perceived. Nice. I like that, Jaren. That's really good. Any other final comments on that before we move on? All right. So what does engagement look like? So I think that, that as, as we're in this new world, I would, I would encourage each of you, regardless of whether you have, so if you have your own business and you're and a solo entrepreneur, you can use this with your clients and you can also use this with your team. Okay, either apply. Uh, so I actually had a, a meeting with a client yesterday where they're having trouble with one of their team members and you know she's trying to figure out what well, is it is this this new normal is it the behavior was was the behavior historical was i not paying attention uh, has this has this is this a new thing so this this pyramid is huge and this is what i shared with her yesterday and that the, the foundational layer is do they understand what it is you're doing with them or what they need to do? So that would be the first question, the yes or no. Uh, the, and this also plays into communication, right? So, you know, the, the second layer is desire. Do they, do they have a desire to do it? Do they, do they want to do it? Is there a natural curiosity around it? Is there motivation there uh, to work with you? Uh, or to, to help in some way. And then the last one is, can they, can they actually do it? Can they achieve it? So this is important as you're, I, I would encourage you with your, so if you, if you have employees, I would encourage you to monitor this in your, in your one-on-ones, in your conversations, gauge whether or not all three of these pieces exist. They should. All of these pieces should exist. And if there is one missing, then that means you do not have a fully engaged employee or a fully engaged client. Uh, and, and there could be some, some challenges with what you need to do in order to get them back, in, in, back engaged. So how do, how do we use technology to our advantage? Um, I would encourage you, and I know this is tough, I know this is tough. I would encourage you to use your video with your clients, with your people, I, I, and, and practice with your family if you're, you're nervous about being on screen. Get comfortable with being on screen, especially for those that are isolated. And they, they, if, they're, if, if they're home by themselves and they don't have any human interaction, it's huge to be able to see somebody else's face. Uh, so whether that be on you know, FaceTime or whether it be in Zoom, whether it be using Skype or something along those lines, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, the next thing below that would be a phone call because then you can at least hear tone of voice, but you get to see body language. You can see how someone is reacting to what you're saying. So I think that's, that's important. We, can, we have the technology, we should use it. We're afraid, we're afraid to use it. Then the second item is gamification. So make it fun. We're gonna do an exercise here where we're gonna use the actual breakout groups and we're gonna separate into groups so that you can see how you could infuse fun and engagement and, and actually help take them out of the world that they're in to create a new world that could be interesting or put, put their troubles aside for, for a period of time. So that would be another way to do it. Recognition and appreci appreciation, saying thank you live in a team meeting, uh, in a one-on-one -on -one, or in a, a, an email, you know, make sure that goes a long way. People want to hear that they're doing a good job. They want to hear that, that things are moving according to plan. I just got off a client call today. This is my one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, client with a young professional who she said her boss is rushing through her one-on-one. -on and she noticed it more now than she did when she was face-to-face -face because she can't see them. She can't see them. They're on the phone. 
but he's he, and she can hear him shuffling papers around so she knows he's not really paying attention and she feels devalued so pay attention to those types of things because what i encouraged her to do was show up in a way where she can suggest maybe they meet every other week but that uh, that every other week then is focused and concentrated they they slow down the conversation and they're more thoughtful with the dialogue so that's what she's going to try and then she will feel appreciated i think if he shows up in a way that that he's honoring the time that he's giving her uh virtually caught co virtual coffee or ha happy hour there's all kinds of those going on uh that's happening as well and that's a face-to-face -face or a, a phone type of thing. And then office tours, home office tours. So we, I think, uh, I think it was Megan, it might have been Megan that mentioned, we're, it was either Megan or Jaren, somebody on this call mentioned, what if we were, you know, we, we actually show our environment. You know, we could show our environment and say, this is what's going on, this is chaos, this is my life right now. So that is another way to use technology to our advantage to create connection and engagement. Those are just some of the tips that I'd like to share. So um, for those of you that have employees, um, I, you know, this was, I, or, or you can, you can use this with your employees or you can use it with your uh, clients. So I use the, the client example, the gal that was not making payroll and I use this with her, you know, what should I start doing for you right now? How can I help you? And, and is there anything that I should stop doing? What is, is there something that's annoying you? Do you want me to stop texting you? Do you want me to stop emailing you? Is there anything that is bothersome to you at this point in time based on what's going on and what you're going through? And then lastly, what should I continue doing? You know, how, these are really huge questions to ask your clients, to ask your employees, uh, to ask, actually, you can you can ask this, these questions in your personal life as well. Uh, so I would encourage you to, and especially in the one-on-ones, you know, if, if with your employees, especially use these in the one-on-ones. And if you use these consistently, then you'll be able to understand what they need. And if you use them consistently, they'll actually have the ability to share. They'll feel more comfortable sharing. And we have a few people that have commented. So Megan, you said, we have work weekly Skype meetings, and I can't tell you how much I look forward to them. This is a time to connect, celebrate successes, solve problems, and learn. Nice, yes, exactly. So you're looking forward to that connection. Excellent. Um, Jaren, you, you said, I attended a virtual chamber board meeting this AM. Great to see some so many familiar faces. Agree, Megan. Excellent. Yeah, so that you're looking forward to this. So this touch base list is really great. I used this when I transitioned to a work from home job a few years ago, allowed me to see a one on one agenda with my boss. Excellent. So this is super simple. You can also, you know, if, if you if you're not meeting face to face, you can put this in a, a, a text. You can also use it in email, but I would definitely encourage it. It's so simple to do. All right. Now, we're going to break out in breakout sessions. This is the first time I've actually used this, so this will be pretty cool. I'm learning as well. And let me find, I want to share this with you in the chat. So let me get back there. Where did my chat go? Right here. All right, so here is the file. You should be able to click on that and download or and, and view that particular file. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to set it up. So we're breaking out, we're in, we're, I'm setting up breakout sessions at random and you have the link. I want you to work together in your breakout sessions on the puzzle. Now, you don't have to finish the puzzle. The, the, the point of this is to, to Create, see how the breakout sessions work. So if you want to use this tool, you could potentially use this tool. It also is uh, an opportunity for you to work with others and, and create more flexibility. 
Uh, and then if you, if, you, if you need to ask for help, you certainly can do that in those groups. And I will actually be jumping into the groups to just check in. So does anybody have any questions? And has, is, is, are you able to grab that particular document right now? I want to make sure. If you're on your phone, I, I understand you may not be able to get it. Um, that's okay. That, that we should, there should be others in the group that can be able to get it. I got it. Okay, good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up the breakout rooms. And we're going to have, we'll have four breakout rooms. And here we go.
Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Everybody's back. How did that feel? Pretty fun. What did you learn? Once we got the hang of it, it was good. It took us a little bit, though. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It, 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 it's a little different. It is a little different. Uh, I, want, I, I do want to give you the puzzle so that you, you, you have the answers in case you would like to know. Did anybody solve it? Probably not, but this wasn't the point of solving it. <laughs> could, is there thoughts on how you could see using this with your clients or your uh, employees, your team? Oh, this is a great team building exercise, absolutely. Excellent, good, good. And I know it was just a little taste because we don't have a whole lot of time together, but I wanted to see, wanted you to see how it could be used. And you know, you, there's any number of ways that you can you can do this. Uh, and this is just a, one silly game, but you know, it definitely gives us an idea of how we can create some additional engagement with our people. So with that, I'll go ahead and move on to the communication. So here is a question, a poll question for you. A high pitched tone of voice is usually interpreted as A, anxious and upset, B, happy and free, C, serious and authoritative, or D, bossy and irritating. Are you sharing your screen? Oh, I am. Maybe it's, oh, so that's good to know that it didn't uh, let me, it, it, let me find that. Okay. Why did it lose that? Hold on, give me just a minute. Wait, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's good to know. So it will stop uh, your screen share when you do the breakout rooms. Now you should be able to see it. Yep. Okay, excellent. So that's good. I learned something new. Awesome. <laughs> so a high pitched tone of voice is usually interpreted as, as A, anxious and upset, B, happy and free, C, serious and authoritative, or D, bossy and irritating. They're getting a couple A's. Yep, that's, that's actually right. Good job. That is right. And so the, the point here is pay attention to tone of voice since communication. So now, now we've lost the, the opportunity to, to see body language unless we're using video, right? If we're using video, great. But if we're not using video, we have to pay attention to the tone of voice. And so, you know, if, if someone is anxious and upset, it, that should come through in their pitch. Uh, there's, you know, there's other ways to interpret that tone. You know, we may need to ask what it, what it means or if they're upset or if there's something wrong. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's one of the tips that I would like to leave with you all. The most, most important thing in communication is to hear what isn't being said. What does this mean to, to each of you? What do you think this means to you? Read between the lines, I suppose. Yes, agreed. And I, I, in my conversation with my client th this morning, uh, she is she's resorting to silence in some of the conversations that she's having with her team because she's afraid to to speak up, and so then they, she. She's not, there needs to be some individuals that are paying attention to that, or she needs to change some of her behavior so that she can get her needs met. Most people have a deeper reason for why they say what they say, how they say it. Thank you, Kathy. So I want to leave you with some other communication tools, and one of them is active listening. So using open questions is definitely a way to do that. So asking why, how, who, parroting back, you know, that's certainly a, a, an option. Uh, my sister, I learned from my sister, this listen hat versus advice hat. I learned this the hard way and that she would come and call and, and vent. 
And then I would immediately offer advice. That's not necessarily the right answer. Find out if they want you to listen or find out if they want your advice or they might want both, but ask the question, especially during this time. Uh, what the other tip is 10% talking. So we, we, are, we are trained to jump into the conversation and to think of what to say next. It's, it's a skill to, to practice being thoughtful and waiting and for other people to talk and then for us to interpret what that is, what they're, what they're trying to say. Try to avoid interrupting individuals. And then the last one would be, you know, in, in this time of challenges, anxiety, fear, all that, all those emotions, it might be more appropriate to lead with the stuff that you're struggling with, because if you do that, they're going to be more apt to share with what, they, what they're struggling with, and then you'll be able to see how you can help them. So those are some just quick tips on active listening. And the, the last item that I'll share with you is the STAR method. So I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with this, and I see, so I want to read this too. Um, so listening, listen versus advice, listen versus advice. I've seen someone say, do you want advice or just to vent? I can do either. That works great. Thank you, Amy, for, for sharing that as well. So the STAR method, They're, now this, a lot of interviewers use this. They, they don't serve it up necessarily that way. They, they're looking for, the STAR stands for situation, S is situation, T is task, A is action, and R is results. And this can be used with our clients and with our people, our teams, uh, our employees. If we, if we have a result in mind, then we can share that, then backing out of that with that particular, whatever situation is happening. Um, you know, I had, a, I had a client that she was feeling like she was wallpaper and she was in this, this recent time that we're in, she wasn't speaking up. She didn't know how to, to handle sharing some information that she had helped another team that was pretty, that was important for her team to know. And so this was the model that she used. And she said, this is a, guys, this is a situation that happened. Uh, this is what we wound up doing together with the other team. And this is the action that I took. Uh, and here was the result that's important for you to know so that if this comes up, you know how to handle it. There's a lot of different ways to use this particular model, but it works in, in, with with all of the, the the people that I just mentioned, as far as clients, employees, teams, to create a tactical approach for communication. Uh, so that's that's a, a a pretty easy model to use. I we are we have two minutes left. I want to find out if there are any additional questions. You know, if I know there's a lot. I'm hoping that that all of you got some tips tips and tricks and different methods and tools to use with your clients, with your, your employees. If you need help with engagement or webinars like this, just fire off an email or reach out to Ground, Groundswell or, or use this link. I'll send this out to, to all of you, send it to, to Jaren. In our final time here, is there any qu additional questions that, that you have? Jaren said, if anyone needs any help from Groundswell, you can reach out at Jaren at swellstartups.com. Uh, Jaren, you want to uh, hop in there? You might be unmuted. You're muted, Jaren. There you go. Now you now go go now. <laughs> okay. So I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us. Michelle, thank you for doing this. You're a true pro when it comes to this stuff. It was great to work with you. Shane is going to be hosting a webinar with us next Wednesday on remote user research. So if that's Yay. your field, jump on our Facebook and help with that. And um, I'm really happy that Joe Carroll can join us today. He's from TSS. They stepped up as a big sponsor for Groundswell this year. We're a really small nonprofit and support like that is going to help us make us through this time when we're not really getting memberships or revenue. So thanks for joining us today, Joe. And thank you for everyone for participating. It was a really great time.
Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Jaren. Go ahead. Sorry, I cut somebody off there. Excellent. And then we will be having a part two and part three of the people process tools. So be on the lookout for that. Jaren and Shay will having some will we'll have some additional dialogue uh, around that. And then if you have any questions, just uh, fire off an email. It was great having you. Thank you guys so much, and guys and gals, for, for coming to the table today. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you too. Bye.